You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Awkward After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Awkward After Show. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, I like this. I do. Yeah. I know. It's a good, good song. Choice. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Hey, hey guys. Baby making music right there. I know. <laughs> the <laughs> Let's teen get it pregnancy off. music right there. <laughs> Perfect for MTV at Awkward. all times. Awkward. <laughs> hey guys, Bing is for doing, and we are here doing another AfterBuzz TV after show for our favorite show and yours, Awkward. Word. Woo! It's season three, episode 10, Redefining Jenna, and boy, oh boy, does she redefine her image. I am Tiana Hobson, and joining me tonight, I have my awesome ho my ho host. Ho -co. <laughs> hey, ho -co. hey, I'll take it. <laughs> my awesome co-host, who I'll let introduce themselves. Oh, me too. Oh, yeah. yeah, as hey, she's everyone. chewing popcorn. I am Giselle Ugardi, always live tweeting during the show. At Giselle Ugardi, you can also call us at 424-256-1729. Hey, you guys. I'm Christina Zias. <laughs> she got sexy going on. Hey, guys. I'm Jason Eichler. And always, as always, you can trend me at hashtag Jason Eichler. <laughs> Wait, this is going to be my sexy voice, and hopefully Nolan Funk will be watching and want to come on. Oh, okay. Ooh, no one's going to funk me. <laughs> And yeah, like, <laughs> you guys can compete and see which side he goes to. Oh, for yeah. sure. I swear to God, if he, if he chooses you, I'm going to beat you. <laughs> I win. No, that, hey, guys, we have hey, a special yeah, guest. We have a special guest. We've got an awkward super fan in the building, just like us. Yes. General Hospital's star, Jimmy Deschler. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Thanks for coming in with us tonight. Thank you Such for a having cutie, me. right? I know. Also <laughs> a Minnesota native as well, so shout yes. out to that. Minnesota. We're going to go have some pie. Yeah. Yeah. Watch like, a little hockey. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into this episode because it was the mid season finale. We just know that the show's coming back on sometime in the fall. So who knows how long we're going to have to wait till we see a new episode. But Probably Thanksgiving. Well, <laughs> considering it's Thanksgiving in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that that would be smart. Yeah. <laughs> Let's pick up right, you know, at the right time of year. Let's try that, guys. Um, so, Jenna. Maddie and Colin's little love triangle. Comes... Love, 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 love it. Of I course do. you do. You love infidelity. And I love Colin. And I don't infidelity... love infidelity, but I love sexual <laughs> tension. Yeah. The sexual tension. Don't we all? Yeah. Um, so Colin and Jenna are in class, and Jenna's, again, reading more, or is she reading more into him trying to invite her somewhere, hand her, pass her a note? This is high school, so who knows what's inside that note, I hope it, well, if it was Jason, I'd say maybe it was a dick pic, but. <laughs> <laughs> I in a note? I, I print them out. In a note? You have to yeah. delete the evidence. Come on. Snapchat. <laughs> Snapchat. Yeah. Smarter than that. It's like permanent Snapchat. <laughs> when I was in high school, we didn't have Snapchat, okay? You know what I love about this is that Jenna is so reserved with, with her feelings when it comes to Maddie throughout, what, the past three seasons or two and a half seasons. And right away, it's like word vomit with Colin. She's like, well, there's this sexual tension, and like you're sending you like secret love notes, and you know, she just can't contain her words. And she's obviously had a problem sharing her thoughts before, so it's very interesting to but see. But I think it is because, like Giselle said last week, intellectual sexual tension. Mm -hmm. Like, it's she's mature she, sexual yeah, like tension. she's being stimulated everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. If you know what I mean. Jimmy, what do you think of this yeah. Colin situation? I don't know. I like Maddie, so I. This whole thing is just kind of... Oh, you don't like I don't know Colin? how to take it. I mean, I do, but I don't know. I'm just kind of... What about before when it was Jake or Maddie? Whose side were you on then? Yeah, because we need Maddie. a straight guy's perspective. You were on Maddie. <laughs> Maddie yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, yeah, I'm definitely Team Maddie. Okay. okay. Yeah. Good to know, because I think, well, See, I'm I Team was, Maddie. I was Team Maddie until Colin came into the picture, and then I'm all Team bets are Jenna. Off. Oh. Female empowerment. <laughs> well, empowerment. All right. <laughs> I just feel like Jenna In should that be case, I'm Team Lacey. <laughs> <laughs> I want to join that team as well. But no, I mean, I think that, like Colin said in one part of the episode, it's like you, she's 16, she could be selfish. I'm all about Jenna doing whatever Jenna wants to do. And one thing that really made me mad was when Maddie said he didn't want to go to the party. And even their whole car conversation before they got in the argument in the car, when he said, you know, what, I don't want to go in there with a bunch of assholes. My thought process is Jenna deals with what you call assholes in her world all the time. She always is playing on your side of the field and going to your parties with the popular kids where she doesn't fit in and feels like an outsider. So why couldn't he just not complain, like, stop well, bitching about it? Well, he was gonna it. go. But he was complaining about, like, he didn't want to go. She had to, like, beg him to go in the first well, place. Well, and if you're going to a party with somebody that doesn't want to go, you feel like the whole time you're there, you have to, like, entertain Babies. them yeah. and make sure they're having fun. So if I was her, I'd be like, just leave. Well, she did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and let's talk about that fight in the car. What are you giggling about? <laughs> are you tickling each other over there? Like, what is yeah. happening? My hand check. <laughs> 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 oh man! I, so I this, this, come on, guys. You, yeah, let's, a little bit of space. I yeah, know. you We're too. In love. <laughs> I'm Is like it? the calendar to her, Jenna. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, That's a good one. I know we're so on topic. It's the season finale. Season finale. So let's talk about this big fight that they have in the car. What did you guys think about that, Jimmy? I, Sorry, Jason. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the other J. I, I heard the J. I just. Um, I don't know. It was it was weird. I didn't. I kind of thought it would end badly, and I mean, whose side were you on? Uh, Maddie, just because I feel like I've been in that situation You're before. Just like a total dude. Oh, man. <laughs> just, we uh, need this Maddie, perspective. Maddie, right now. Maddie, like I love your loyalty to him. No, yeah, I don't know. It's I understand like his point of it, but then at the same time, you have to make sacrifices if you want to have a girlfriend. Um, but I don't know. I feel like that conversation made Jenna do what she did at the end. I don't know. See, I kind of felt like listening to it, too, they were both kind of in the wrong, and it was almost like you were watching a breakup happen. Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought they were like, going to break up, too. Yeah, because, like, every breakup, there's two sides to each story, and I kind of agreed with both of them for a little bit. Yeah. But I wanted him to go so she could be alone with Colin. <laughs> they both kind of dropped major bombs on the other one. Like, I kind of felt like they both kind of went for the low blow. Yeah. Where, mm -hmm. you know, Jenna basically says, you know, you're just afraid of going in there and saying something dumb. And he I know, says, like, ouch. like, I was, <laughs> was, yeah. And then he comes back with, you know, I was mortified by you at a time when he knows she was her most insecure. Mm -hmm. And After that's that's when I think it's almost best if things get that crappy, <laughs> Watch, <laughs> watching my language, to just, like, step away. You know what I mean? Like, they're just in high school. They don't have to be together. But I don't think it was that But when you're crappy. in high school and it's the first love, like, you think you have it's to like be together. It's, like, always and you think messy. You think they're going to be together forever. <laughs> well, at that point in the car, Maddie said something. <laughs> besides him being embarrassed by her, he said something like, I feel like this whole time I have to make up for, like, the beginning of our relationship, mm -hmm. which really bothered me because, and I think that Jenna also felt like, okay, well, are you just, are you kind of just with me because you felt bad about how you treated me in the beginning? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I got out of it, at least. Well, and then to say that he was embarrassed that she tried to kill him, kill herself, like, what a dick move. Like, you and then you tried to kill yourself, yeah, and I was embarrassed that everyone knew. And you thought it was his fault. Yeah, but don't you think we all th knew he was embarrassed the entire time? Like, I didn't think that was, like, a groundbreaking, like, yeah. ooh, Yeah, but I think that's been part of her, why she likes him so much, is that he's never embarrassed by her. But he brought up a good point, too, where we've never, I've never thought about how her attempted suicide affected him mentally. Mm -hmm. You know, like, a guy's self-esteem, you know, he sleeps with you, and then the next day, you try yeah. to kill yourself? Like, that's <laughs> that, that night. I kinda it was that the same bad? Thing when I heard it out, that was, like, the first time I thought about it, and I was like, oh, yeah, I never really thought about it that way. So he's been going through all these mental things yeah. at the same time, and then on top of that, his parent situation, which she never See, brings up. See, and that's up. when I moved to his side of the fight, because yeah. I thought that was kind of harsh. And then what was her answer to it? I thought you She's would like, bring it up. She's like, well, you never up. told me. Yeah. I kind of 
agree because sometimes you don't want to pry if people aren't ready to share. Yeah, but, but she didn't even try. Yeah, she didn't even try. that close with somebody, obviously you say like, hey, is everything good at home? That's all it takes. Like he moved okay. into her home. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. things were so bad at his house. So, I, and we've said this so many times that Jenna can be a little selfish. Yeah. A lot selfish. And did not communicate. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know. I felt really bad for him at this point. Yeah, and one of the other things we've been talking about all season, Jimmy, is how Jenna and Maddie don't communicate Mm -hmm. well with each other and how no kind of in, there. Yeah, in this moment we see everything that they possibly should have been talking about all year come crashing down at the same moment and them just piling it on each other and that's why my yeah. mama tells me you need to write a letter <laughs> 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 or else it'll all come out <laughs> well jenna writes a blog and now she writes in her creative writing class and yeah. colin understands she's her got words an <laughs> yeah. she's got multiple outlets that colin can really? decipher Oh, I thought you were just saying that. <laughs> I was, I was gonna go so you can edit her. Yeah, I was gonna, and then I decided <laughs> maybe not. Just saying what everyone else is clearly yeah. thinking. Yeah, that's all. That's how we think here. Um, so then, um, so it was decided that Maddie would leave, and Jenna would stay at the party, and that she'd ask Colin and Angelique for a ride home. But when we get inside the party, we find out that Colin and Angelique have broken up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At this point, Jenna's also in her sexy slutty dress. She looked yeah. hot. She looked, she looked hot. So, hot. so good. She Jimmy? looked good, right? Jimmy? Yeah, yeah, she did. She looked good, right? <laughs> I was yeah. into it. No more awkward little Jenna. Well, and I think too, especially he shouldn't have let her go to that party after that fight. Mm -hmm. Knowing well, I, do you think he has any kind of suspicion about Colin? At I don't all? think so. No. I don't think he does, which is surprising to me. I know. Well, but they, he's never been around them. The only time that there's ever tension between Jenna and Colin, sexual tension, is when they're in class. But I would they don't think really when talk Sadie has like warned him before, because him and Sadie have been friends for a while. I would think maybe he would listen to her, even though she usually is just the bitch. But has she said She's anything? She's got some insight. Remember that one day when she was like, Jenna has something to tell you. But she didn't she say what it was. It. And when, she did say that you should read her blog, but he read it and took interpreted it as, this yeah. is what she wants yeah. me, me to do. do, so I'm going to create it for her. Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> Poor Maddie. He has no idea that this is happening. So, and then we again, you know, Jenna and Colin are talking, and just like at the coffee house, she's ignoring Maddie's text messages, like, yeah. hey, where are you? What's up? Like, she's not responding, and I took that as a bad sign, because in my mind, like Jimmy said, I kind of thought that fight in the car was their breakup. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the that kind of made me believe that even more, the whole, like, not texting him back. That he she should have at least sent one just saying like she was still there mm -hmm. and that she'd let him know when she was leaving or whatever, but to just ignore it like I, being team Maddie and like seeing <laughs> him um, like I feel like that'd be that was a bad situation for him. He like he but deserved like, a little more I guess. I feel like when you're in a fight with somebody and they text you right after you don't wanna text them back. But, like, the I fight kind of blew over. Yeah, like really, are you sure it's okay? Yeah, okay, bye. I don't really think they really either. resolved anything, though. I think they just put what they wanted out on the line, and then they both were just upset, so they left. See, I see it in two different ways. One, I think she's being really disrespectful to him because, like you said, Jimmy, she could have at least just been like, oh, I'm still here. Yeah. You know, like, mm -hmm. not given any answer when she's coming or how she's getting there, but, like, I'm here. And then, two, on the opposite side, if she's trying to get Colin... I'm like, girl, you're looking like you're way too available at the moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why are you, are you blowing you up? You don't have to play those games when it's already your girlfriend, though, or your boyfriend. But it's not even playing games. It's like, I don't know. Because if she wants to date Colin down the line, too, he's already seeing that, like, she's blowing off her current boyfriend. Why are you, like, laughing? Sorry. It's true. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Tiana is texting me You're at the table welcome. so that I can remind everybody <laughs> to go onto iTunes and download Serial Buddies. It is a movie made by everybody here at After Buzz, and it stars Maria Menounos, Beth Ferris from Two Broke Girls, Kathy Lee Gifford. Artie Lang. Artie Lang. Everyone and their mom. All of the proceeds from the movie go back into After Buzz so we can do what we do for you for free. Faux free. Faux free. That shit's faux free. <laughs> <laughs> and I probably shouldn't swear during this live read. <laughs> but everything we do is for free. So With it's no the least you can do. Ads. And it's like 4 or $5 on iTunes. So download it on iTunes or you can go to SerialBuddies.com. Spelt the killer way or like the cereal we found out. 
-hmm. Both will take you to the same website. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. With the C2? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Breakfast. Breakfast buddies or killer buddies. <laughs> Whatever you want. Serialbuddies.com. Download it, please, please, please. And Thank while you're there, rate our show, too. We love to know what you think about it. So when it comes back, we can make it better than ever. And subscribe and share it with your friends and your mom and your everyone. Everyone. Yeah, as, as you're downing <laughs> <know>. popcorn stone. <laughs> I want to watch Serial Buddies. <laughs> <laughs> She's already ready for it. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about that car scene. Because I kind of like Giselle's popcorn bag is so loud. <laughs> I think she's done, done now. <laughs> We're good. No more distractions. This car scene. I kind of felt like the whole time with Maddie sitting around texting Jenna, waiting for her to basically have any fun at this party. Oh, that's the car scene we're talking about. Yeah, oh, that's the car. Oh, sorry. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about the other car scene. The, the, the car scene. Do you want to talk about that now? Or <laughs> yeah, we do. I don't know. It was just it's like like the 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 peak of the episode, so I wasn't sure if we were gonna talk about it now or wait. But okay, let's talk about it now. Well. Let's get it over. Let's get I, it on. I kind of felt like Maddie was going around calling Jake, you know, being like, "Oh man, you're being like Tamara's bitch. Like, man up, grow up here." But you're not having fun at this party because you're waiting for a girl to text yeah. you back. But at the same time, if you just got in a fight with the love of your life. You're probably not gonna want to have fun at a party, or I don't at least know. I would have gotten really drunk. Yeah, I would have got really drunk. <laughs> I'm just sit there. Yeah, I'm not gonna sit there. And not if have I got to fight with a guy, then I'm like, screw you. Either go hang out with other guys, or like, I just need a lot of estrogen, and like, girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I just want to be miserable. Well, and then that. when Jenna's in the car with Colin, and she's like, oh, I guess I'm selfish. He's just like saying all the right things. Oh. Yeah. And they're just sitting there, and you know it's about to be on. And. And she goes for it. She went for it hard. That was a... I was so happy. It was happy. like, boom. Yeah. But my question is, Jenna, you just res finally responded to the text message and said, I'm here yeah. out front. So why would you tell your boyfriend where you are and then make that kind of decision? Because what if he saw... But I think that Jenna doesn't want to be held responsible for her actions. And I almost feel like in some way or another, she wants to get caught and, like, wants Maddie to have that relationship. Because that's being selfish. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't want to be responsible for their breakup or for his broken heart. And at the same time, he just gave her this whole YOLO speech. Like, <laughs> hey, you're only 16. Like, go for it. Go be selfish. Yeah. She's like, oh, my gosh. And he's so like, right. look at me. I don't know. Going back to, like, uh, Maddie, how he was just sitting at the party, I feel like if he... Because he had the impression that Jenna was coming. So I guess it, it's not as bad that he was just waiting around not doing anything if he figured that she was coming to hang out with him and they could have had fun. But I, guess. I don't know. See, I like that point. I guess yeah. I'm just yeah. sticking yeah. up for Maddie again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie's got, your boy. We got a definitive Fifty Shades Maddie of Bo. Here. What? Fifty Shades of Bo. Oh, that's <laughs> so funny. I'm going to well, try and sway him. Something else I think is interesting, too, is when Colin was on the phone with Angelique. He's like, okay, babe, like, but, you know, it's better this way. We'll talk about it tomorrow over breakfast. So, like, I don't know. Do you think they're completely over? I think on his end, maybe. And maybe she just didn't see this coming and wants to keep talking about it. And he's like, nah, crazy bitch. Like, we, we threw. <laughs> well, because I feel like Jenna and Colin are almost made for each other. And they're both kind of dating people that they know. For right now. Yeah. They don't necessarily need to be dating. Not forever. Forever. I don't know. Forever. I don't like them. Forever. I do too. I hope she gets pregnant. Oh my <laughs> gosh. We'll talk about that in predictions then. Um, so last question on this. Do you guys think Maddie saw them kissing in the car or did he come up too late? No. I don't think he saw them. The only thing that makes me think maybe he did was we didn't see his face at the end. It was just his back when she came up to him. She looked a little disheveled. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. true. Jimmy? Yeah, I, I don't know. Part of me feels like he did see it, and he's just going to wait to see if she, she tells him. Oh. Yeah. That's what I think, too. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I think whether he did or not, he's going to pretend like nothing happened. Because he's still so just upset about how he admitted to her that he was embarrassed of her. Yeah, and so I if wonder, anything, he would maybe even excuse it, even if he did see it. Yeah, because mm -hmm. he's kind of self-deprecating. Yeah. Because maybe even if that's why he's with her for so long, because he thinks that he's the reason she tried to kill herself. <laughs> that's a great well, way. Well, he knows it's not the truth anymore. Well, we'll see. He just see. wants to get in Lacey's yeah. pants. 
right? <laughs> I think, all. isn't it Lacey who might want to get in Maddie's pants? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she does. Yeah. <laughs> we had her in here last week, and she was saying that she writes or she asks the writers every season to write an affair scene with them, and they never do. <laughs> <laughs> like, it would funny. work. Would like, it that yeah. like a great fantasy scene or something? Yeah, that, yeah, that would be different, but... I kind of <laughs> feel like it would be Maddie's fantasy, too, like, Maddie's yeah. and Lacey's fantasy, because Lacey's in love with Maddie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There's All right. a part of me that, like, wants to believe... I, I feel like Ashley and Bo are actually dating. Do you? Mm-hmm. Huh. I can't see them actually dating. I didn't at first, but after the reunion last night, I feel like they are. Yeah, did you guys all watch that? Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, they're no. not. And he, has yeah. a di- he has a different girlfriend. I've seen her on Twitter. Oh, <laughs> oh really? <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Well, that's... Well, maybe, unless they're, that's just, maybe they're gonna Unless that's up. just like his beard, cute? you know, the cover-up for, for Ashley. Is she cute? Yeah. <laughs> well, she... I would hope that she's cute. Yeah. Dang. All right, so let's talk about the Asian mafia and Ming. <laughs> Because Christina's she, favorite. I'm obsessed with the Asian mafia. They're so cool. And the, I wish I had a parking space that. everywhere I went. I, I know. know. Isn't that amazing? They know her every move before it happens. That's so cool. So Ming is the new leader of the Asian mafia. How do we feel about this? I love it. I Are you kidding? It's Perfect. It's awesome. I really want her panda hat. I feel like <laughs> I'm in the Asian mafia as well. Like watching it now that she's <laughs> when Ming is in the Asian mafia. I I'm am in the Asian, Asian mafia. <laughs> <laughs> so what what did they do for? In the morning, like she gets to school and she's flagged to and her space. parking space with the, her name on it, and also her name in Mandarin. As oh well. yeah, oh, yeah. And I love, all bases. I love when she's talking to it I so that. slow. Yeah. She's like, and I went to my space, <laughs> <laughs> spit it out. Yeah, they hand her her favorite cup of coffee. Yeah, mm-hmm. very specific. Very latte. specific. <laughs> and then, yeah, snaps the fingers, yeah. and the minions come running out. How, that. how awesome would your life be if you could snap your finger and minions just come and do whatever you want? I mean... <laughs> sounds like a Tuesday to me. <laughs> yeah, it happens all the time to ask my ex-boyfriends. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, Takes at least a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> like 3 a.m. Why won't you call me? <laughs> <laughs> With like two text messages and three voicemails. And then, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <Hate> my exes. <laughs> That's why they're exes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then Ming, <laughs> Ming meets the accountant. And that was my that's favorite scene. so funny. Yeah. So racist. <laughs> <laughs> but he's little. I know, that's why it's like. Of the, he's little. It's, yeah, because and little And she Asians talks, and then his mouth moves. moves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty racist. Yeah. I didn't think about the fact that that happened, too. And they matched it perfect, because she talks slow and that yeah. so yeah. funny. talks slow to that was hilarious. Um, I kind of was expecting them to reveal like this creepy old man or something. I don't know why I thought that was where they were going with him, but I kind of liked that so it was like a, yeah. like a twelve-year-old boy <laughs> running a mafia. Mm-hmm. Like what? The briefcase, and I, I thought it was going to be like loads of cocaine or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, just the key. The key to what? And the phone. To everything. To everything. <laughs> it, it's just so funny because she's always in this like. What a panda bear beanie, <laughs> and they're all in, like, in some shape suits or form. and ties picking her up, and you know the little cow, and he's so cute. He reminds me of this little Asian neighbor I have, William, back home, <laughs> <laughs> who like honestly is like him because the kid is could do everything. Okay, he's the smartest person I know, and he's five. He speaks like five different languages. He plays a million instruments. He's unbelievable. And I picture him being the accountant. God, why did I have to be white? <laughs> <laughs> what a waste. It's just so funny. And But she uses... I love how she puts the powers to test for the party. Yes. No, no, she's like, and a jump house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what kind of castle? Castle. <laughs> castle. I don't know if I saw this happening when she punched Becca in the face. But it's been... A great turnaround for the I know, Asian violence mafia. is always the answer. It is, right? <laughs> Clearly. Um, yeah, I love Ming as the leader, but I think once she figures out how to use her powers, I kind of want to see Ming, like, go crazy with her power and kind of go off the wall for a little bit, and maybe they try to take away her powers because she's being, like, a dictator. Almost like Mean Girls. Yeah. Oh. Let's well, see, take a, I don't know, I can see though. that happening. You can, right? Can't yeah. you? Because... She's like, Did she wasn't you? even allowed to leave her house for anything. But in anything. the previews, we see her getting mad at Jenna because Jenna's being a 
lots bitch. of different words. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna say bitch, but it's more than just a bitch. She's yeah. getting lots of. Just but just Ming gets a, gets a makeover too. Blonde. Yeah. And if you guys see, saw the after show, her makeover is kind of part of her new Asian mafia identity. Mm. So maybe she has like a little dark turn too. Ooh. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. What do you think of the Asian mafia? I love it. You do? Yeah. Right? They're so fun. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, yeah, that whole scene where she gets the key and phone, that was probably one of my favorite scenes of the season, actually. <laughs> no other like race to pull off. Yeah, it was like the shock value of when they showed the accountant yeah. with this little kid. <laughs> like, but it's, it's almost really believable. Yeah. You're in a limo. Yeah. You're like in a nice car. Like, what are you doing out of bed so late? Little boy? <laughs> I know. <laughs> they don't sleep. Oh, oh, yeah. is that how they do yeah. it? They study so much, they don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but really, no other race could pull it off. It's true. Yeah. Like, it had to be the Asian mafia. mafia. Yeah. Not the white mafia. Sorry, Jason. <laughs> That's just the mafia. Or Mexican mafia. <laughs> I don't think black people have a mafia. We're just gangsters. It's, ca- <laughs> <laughs> it's called the gang. It's called the gang. <laughs> They're kind of dangerous. <laughs> What's up? What's up? Um, okay, let's talk about the after mall ball. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jason, you don't like the way I said that? No, I love the way you said that. Um, so Tamara finally is in with the Julies. She gets to co-host the party, and they give her a big old list of all Can we give things. a shout-out to my Julie that's from Camp Rock that I just found out <laughs> today? Tess, on Camp Rock. Welcome back. I had no idea. <laughs> She's playing another mean girl. I nice, know. But love that. Um, and what, what was, oh, I'll get to that quote later. Um, so they give her this huge list of things that they, that she has to get done, and she, of course, makes Jake help her out with it, but in the process, doesn't ever really ask him anything. It's more like demanding him. So this was the first kind of test in their relationship that we've really seen where things get rocky, and they, did they break up no. for a minute? No. Or was that just I think a fight? Just like a fight. A fight. Yeah. Because the way they reunited, I kind of felt like, well, is, was it over or? No. No, I think it was just a little argument. I think if it was over, he would have left. Yeah, because I think they've been in the honeymoon phase, like, since Paris. <laughs> so now it's. Shut down. Yeah. <laughs> and I think Maddie was probably getting to him a little bit, too. And obviously she was being a pretty big diva. So, and then. I mean, when Maddie's saying, oh, you got to add balls to that list, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, that doesn't really help yeah. out with your confidence and when your girlfriend's begging you to do everything else, too, or at least demanding it. Mm-hmm. So I feel like he kind of just it was like the straw that broke the camel's well, back. Well, and she'll do anything. Like, what she emptied her savings account for them. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. She spent crazy. everything. She was saving up for a car, but she doesn't need to do that anymore because Jake's here to drive her around. <laughs> See, what I think is interesting is that aren't Jake and Maddie the two most popular boys? In the yeah. school, so like they, the Do they Jenna, have other boys at the school, right? But That's Jenna, true. the little Colin. gay one, Colin, and, Colin. Colin. <laughs> and apparently Colin's not popular there because no, because he's, he's a girlfriend elsewhere. But Jenna and Tamara are dating the two most popular boys, so aren't they the new popular girls? Like, why mm-hmm. is she trying so hard to still be popular? Because they still haven't accepted her in the position. Because you know, I think that everyone at the school thinks that Jake and Maddie are slumming it, hmm. and. <laughs> dating kind of under there where they should be in the social standing so they still have a lot to prove to these people to get in which I don't think you have to prove anything but (laughs) (laughs) I don't think you're perfect just the way you are girls but they kind of are slumming it because if they're both they should be dating the Julies or something or Sadie Sadie. (laughs) or Sadie what do you think of Jake and Tamara um I I don't know honestly (laughs) (laughs) I like them but I don't think the last. I don't know why. What do you think? This is what I want to happen. Maddie and Sadie. Maddie. I could see that happening, honestly. But do you Especially, yes. yeah. I what? could definitely see that happening. Thank you. You're the first person to Hold agree on. with me. No. I, I don't think I'd no, like second, it. Though, I wouldn't like you it. Didn't, but... Yeah, I was going to yeah. say. You didn't ask him if he thought it was going to happen. You asked him if, if he would want it to happen. But you would. No, he said, he, he, just said he could see it happening. I could, yeah, I could see it happening. I don't necessarily want it to happen. Oh. No one wants it except for you. I think it would be great. If you were on the show, who would you want to be dating? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna? Okay, let's put them, let's put them on a tier. Jenna or Tamara? Or Ming. I'm throwing mm. Ming in the middle of this. Or Val. 
Ming. Or Ming. Asian persuasion. I like Ming. I do too. I could get whatever I want then. Just have oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Sadie, Sadie used to have that kind of clout, but she's now poor, so a bitch without money is just a bitch. Um, shout out to some of our tweeters, Tori and Devna and Sheldon, who are saying that we're doing a great job tonight. Oh, thank oh, you. Yeah. Thanks for listening, watching. We adore you guys. And if you have any questions, let us know. Yes. And I want to talk about that scene with Val and Lacey being besties again. So funny. I've been waiting all season, I feel like, for them to be back together. And it was so short, but it was so awesome at the same time. Because uh, they're like excitable little kids. <laughs> I love how <laughs> Lacey got that dress for herself. I got this like, like a corny little dress for Jenna that's not sexy at all. And then she's like, ooh, like that's not for you, that's for me. But at least she knows her daughter's style because <laughs> it looked like something Jenna would wear. But apparently not because Jenna chose the other yeah, dress. Now, and now Jenna's gone wild. <laughs> and Lacey looked kind of, she gave a look like, oh, she wants to wear it. Like, it's hey, mature. like it's about time. <laughs> She's like, I was hoping this day would come. But I bet she didn't realize that, you know, putting her in that dress would lead to Colin and her finally locking lips, as they say, as the kids say. Hey, yeah. hey. Locking lips. And one other thing I want to talk about is Lisa confessing about killing Ricky Shorts. Um, that poor girl. Is her name we Lisa? have to talk about Lisa. the webisode a little Lisa. later. Lisa. 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 Sorry. I said Lisa. I'm like, who is Lisa? <laughs> I looked down at my paper. I'm like, there's two S's right there, but I still said Lisa. <laughs> I can't read. Um, Lisa confessing that, you know, she killed Ricky and Sadie actually coming in and doing a nice thing. Yeah, I think that was awesome. Yeah. Just how she saved it and then the um afterwards how she was like I don't I made all of that. Up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was pretty funny. She was quick on her feet. Too. Yeah, she was on the MTV after show afterwards and she was saying that she likes that this season that you've seen more of the human side of Sadie. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, she's still a bitch, but she's like a nice like she's still There's a human. Some good in yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I liked it too. And should we talk about the webisode? Yeah. Right now? Yes. So I don't know who all watches the webisodes, but I everyone do. Everyone should. Yes, everyone should. Actually, so, I didn't watch last night. <laughs> <laughs> it's episode seven. Val is still d trying to detect who is Ricky's killer. She's basically given up. And then Lissa walks in having a meltdown of her own and in her jumbling mess of whatever she's saying she says like and i killed ricky but sadie said you know that it couldn't have been me and then val is like choking on something and <laughs> after she finishes choking and she's okay she's like wow what a rush and then she slams down these index cards and she's like i figured out who killed ricky and this is like wait but i just told you that i did and so she's like he dated sadie he's a reckless driver he <laughs> tased himself in the shower I don't remember that, but that happened. And he liked to choke himself for pleasure. So Ricky was a thrill seeker. So what Val has deducted is that he died of autoerotic anaphylactic shock. <laughs> Anaphylactic As shock. a result of? As a result of him eating some peanuts, pleasuring himself, and not being able to get to his EpiPen in time to save his life. Interesting. Because Ricky was a freak and everyone knew it. So that is how, <laughs> boys and girls, Ricky Schwartz died. Wow. Uh, well, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Back it up a second. Rewind. Let me just get this straight. So he purposely ate the peanuts to pleasure himself because he knew he was allergic, but was a thrill seeker. Yes. So it was erotic to him? Yes. Wait, I'm really confused now. So almost <laughs> dying gets him he, off. I thought autoerotic like asphyxiate <laughs> is when you like choke yourself, like you hang yourself, and you're like at the same well, I time. Think that's but I, think one, that's I think that's like a type. A of type of it. His type was that he ate the peanut, so he was on the verge of. Let's Google. I thought, type was, I thought asphyxiation means <laughs> choking. Maybe, it, but he choked on All the right, peanuts. All right, guys, I'm big in this. Oh, it's. Well, it's autoerotic <laughs> anaphylactic shock. So the anaphylactic shock. The anaphylactic part is the peanut allergy. 
and the autoerotic part is him eating the peanuts and pleasuring himself. Ricky wow. Schwartz, you are yeah. a dirty, it's not the dirty, dirty <laughs> <situation>. <laughs> I know. So, Talk about so Jimmy, on nuts. Jimmy, what do you think about how Ricky died? Uh, I, that's the weirdest oh. thing I've ever heard. <laughs> mother, or su- um, mother or suffocation. It's funny, though. Okay. Oh. Um, it's funny. I actually I don't know him that well, but I've met the guy who played Ricky, he, oh. my photographer, it's her son, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. <laughs> so yeah, next time so you see her, you ask him about it? Yeah. No, I, I know how you die. <laughs> <laughs> now you can be like, hey, so I know how your, I know how your son died. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, That's weird. I, know what, I know what really <laughs> happened. You want some nuts? <laughs> <laughs> and... That Christina, only, are you okay with this? Because you still look a little this, confused. I am. I can't believe this, and only Val would get to come to that conclusion. <laughs> Val is the greatest detective. She's right up there with Sherlock Holmes. I'd say. Yeah, I'd say Val at Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Obvi. Uh, so that about wraps up our recap of the show. So now we want to just talk to you, Jimmy, and find out about you and your life and your, your aspirations. <laughs> I know. And, you know what you look for in a in a date. No, I'm just joking. But, but no, I mean, I you like can tell us. Yeah, yeah. 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 you already answered that. <laughs> yeah, answer that first. <laughs> um, what do I look for in a date? Uh, to have fun. To... What is... I don't know. Are you? What's your relationship status? If you don't mind him yeah. asking, because I'm um, getting a little nosy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm He's single. Like, single? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so tweet Jimmy. <laughs> We're if trying you, to hook you up. If you'd um, like to have fun, just send him a yeah. message. I don't. I think the perfect date would be ice skating because I love hockey, and that's just kind of my thing. Um, ice skating. And maybe a movie or dinner. I don't know. Aw, yeah. that's so good sweet. things. Just yeah. have fun, and oh. then also have time to talk and just get, get to, to know. know each other. Yeah. Do so, you have time to date someone right now? Like, what's your work schedule like? Um, kind of, not really. I'm really busy, so I don't date anyone right now just for that reason. But uh, I definitely could. Okay. Yeah. And make time for. Yeah. I want to talk to you about General Hospital. They just had their 50th anniversary. Yes. And what is it like to? play a part in such an iconic television program? Um, It's amazing. I didn't realize it until all this um, 50th anniversary stuff started coming in April. (laughs) uh, It was just, like, really eye-opening and how, like, legendary the show is, and I'm just honored to be a part of it, and it's a great thing. Yeah, because it has, like, loyal, loyal fans. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. there is a lot of fans who have told me they've been watching it all 50 years, so. Had you ever watched soap operas? I haven't, no. My, well, I've seen a few just because my mom would be watching them at home. Days of Our Lives was her favorite. Okay. But I converted her. Did you have Did you have to um, catch up on General Hospital before you started? Years. 50 years. I did. Yeah. did you have I didn't catch Netflix? all 50 years, no. But, uh, <laughs> I, I watched a few episodes before the audition just to kind of get a feel of the show. And then when I was going in to test for it, I watched um, kind of the more recent shows to see what where the storyline is and kind of catch up on it. So, and now I watch it every day just to see. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, hey, just I to rem- check yourself <laughs> out. <laughs> hey, oh, I, I look good in that scene. <laughs> I know. How do you memorize lines that fast? Because there's so much. You guys are very fast yeah. paced yeah. when you're slow, shooting, right? It's, huh? Well, like, cause it, like soap operas isn't the kind of thing where you have like one scene that's maybe 30 minutes long, but it drags on for five days. Since it like goes back no. and forth? No? Oh, no. like no. when they're shooting or? Yeah, like what's your shooting schedule? Um, It's on average like three to four days a week, sometimes five. And I'm usually in there at seven and out no later than three. <laughs> a lot of the times I'm out by like 12 actually. So oh, that's pretty that's good. not too bad, yeah. Um, but there is, everyone else does work hard. Um, They're there until like eight o'clock every night, and there's just so many storylines, so it's not all me there. Right. It's other actors. Um, But yeah, it's, I don't know, it's just great to be a part of the show. How many episodes are you guys working on per week, or? Uh, It varies a lot. We've done like up to eight, I think, and then one week. Yeah. That's crazy. And then sometimes we'll do less, it just depends. So you've also got some director credits. Um, Tell us about Hope for Our Own. Uh, That is a documentary me and Riley Barris, a friend of mine, are in the process of making. It's going to shine light on homelessness in Los Angeles and just the 
different faces of it and different causes of it and just kind of change the public's perspective on homeless people. That's cool. Nice. Yeah. Well, How'd you be able to catch that? Um, right now, we are still in like the pre-production stages, but we have a page, a Facebook page, and Twitter, Hope for Our Own, an LA story, and uh, you can stay updated on Twitter and Facebook. And we are looking to start filming like mid-July, so. Cool. Yeah. What attracted you to that project, or I mean, what made you decide to do it? Um, just kind of seeing the large amount of homelessness in Los Angeles, and um, just hearing things and seeing different things and kind of realizing that they're not really treated. Well, they're not, not that they're treated bad, but a lot of people just kind of see them as like not human, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I just, we both thought about it. We volunteer at shelters and we both just wanted to make a change. So that's, that's cool. Really nice. yeah. He's a good little Minnesota boy. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Minnesota nice. Yes. Well, I think it's good though, if you have the spotlight to do things like this yeah and I think it's important mm -hmm. to give back yeah definitely and I was gonna ask um so you said you moved out here from Minnesota when did you move out here we moved out here in 2010 we came out in 2009 just for a pilot season just for auditions and to see how we liked it and I went back to Minnesota and then a year later we moved out here permanently and by we is it your whole family or me and my mom oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. how old were you when you moved out here 14 15 okay. wow yeah um, and then I have two other brothers. One is still living in Minnesota. One is in Tennessee. He was in the Army. And now him and his wife are living in the mountains in Tennessee. Oh, so. wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, they're both. All over the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you guys first came out here, like, what was that like for you? You know, like, leaving everything behind and starting fresh here? Like, were you, you were going out on auditions and everything, of course, but... Yeah, know. it was very different. I grew up I was always playing sports like year-round hockey football baseball and wrestling so coming out here and then just completely cutting myself off from sports was very different um, but and like LA is completely different from Minnesota <laughs> yeah. you know that, um, just coming out here and there's so many people and the traffic is crazy at like midnight. Like I'll leave here and it'll be, yeah. <laughs> the traffic will be stopped. Yeah, freeway stopped. Uh -huh. uh, but it's just a completely different like atmosphere here, and I don't know. I like it. I definitely like the weather here a lot better. <laughs> For sure. Do you see yourself since you're doing directing now as more of a director or actor? Or would you like to do both? Um, movies maybe. Yeah. I would love to do movies. Uh, that's kind of my goal right now. Um, is to eventually do some feature films. And I think I'd be more on the acting side of those. Okay. Um, I like directing, but it's not really... The main goal. The, yeah, the main okay. goal. This is just something I thought was a great thing to do and that I found passion in. So, I don't know. Are acting you? is kind of my main main goal right okay. now. Yeah. Are you more interested in drama or comedies? Um well, obviously, I'm doing drama. drama That's yeah. kind of my <laughs> strong point. Uh, but I would love, I like take classes and stuff. I'm trying to get better at the whole comedy thing, but I would love to be in a comedy. That'd be awesome. Comedy's hard. Yeah. It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very different. Is there any actor or actress that you would really love to work with or any director? Um, Will Smith is kind of yes. my role model. Like, he is just <laughs> amazing. Like relax. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he was walking through the door right now. I'm I'm sorry. The no, funny yeah. thing is, there's at least one Will Smith reference every week. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That we went the whole show and then. <laughs> I know you brought it up. Yeah. It's perfect. <laughs> no, just like everything. His whole career is inspiring. Like starting out Fresh Prince of Bel Air. That was like He's amazing. one of the most hilarious shows I've ever seen. <laughs> And then how he goes and does like these end of the world crazy films and is completely like in character and he can like switch characters so much. It's just, I look up to him a lot as an actor. So. That's cool. Have you always wanted to be an actor? I haven't, no. Until I was like 13, I was going to be a professional hockey player. Okay. <laughs> that, that was, I you ate, should... slept, and what made lived hockey. Um, I honestly don't know. That's like a, the most popular question I get asked, and I, I still haven't thought of like the right answer for it. You should do one of those like Disney hockey movies. That's what that's I wanted to do. Awesome. Awesome. I would love that. <laughs> Mighty Ducks uh, Seventeen. Oh my gosh, I watched that the other day. You should that do another one. Amazing. Mighty Ducks. I've played in a lot of the rinks that they filmed that. Oh really? Yeah. Minnesota, right. Yeah. And then the movie Miracle. I don't know if you guys have seen yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That was filmed in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I always think about that. Like, if they were to do another miracle, like modern day, like I'd be perfect age for it. That'd be cool. Yeah, and and a, I mean, you you have a young looking face too, so yeah, you know that works to your advantage as well as an actor. Um, I wanted to ask you too, what would be at this point in your career? What would be your dream role? If you could pick anything in the world to get greenlit tomorrow, what would it be? Um, it would probably honestly be a hockey role. Like that, it would just be amazing to go play hockey and to act and that be my job. It's the two things I love the most. So uh, that would probably be the dream role. Do you get to play hockey at all in L.A.? I do, yeah. Really? I, yeah, I'm playing in adult league, so. Oh, oh that's cool. Yeah. Yep. Is that like, do the people at General Hospital freak out that you're going to get injured or something? Um, not really, no. Okay. Another, Jason Thompson on the show, he plays hockey. Mm -hmm. He's oh, really? from Canada, yeah. So we, I kind of have a hockey buddy with him. But, that's uh, cool. No, they're, they're not really too concerned. That's good. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every time I play hockey, people freak out. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, they should freak out. Well, Jimmy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank um, you. Can you let everyone know where they can find you on social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter? Yeah, I have a Facebook fan page. It's Jimmy Deschler. And then Twitter and Instagram is at Jimmy D, Jimmy D-E-E 1414. I'm following you. Don't awesome. worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't follow too. Me. Follow yeah. him. If I'm following, he means he's stalking you and he knows where you live right now. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into some news and gossip. After Buzz TV News. Um, I know that you guys all got to watch the after show last night. I didn't get a chance to watch it. Any highlights you guys want to bring up from there that favorite um, moments my favorite moment was when they showed what's coming up on the Same. show and yeah. it's gonna be crazy like nuts yeah i feel like we're gonna see i mean kind of what lacy was telling us last week i'm mm -hmm. not lacy nikki <laughs> um jenna is gonna be a bad bad girl i think her affair continues and she it gets does into some continue. other stuff so mm -hmm. it'll be interesting i mm -hmm. just love seeing nikki glesher and her reaction to Bo the whole time she was just like yeah so we're gonna have you guys compete against each other and if at any point in time you want to rip each other's clothes off or <laughs> make out I'm available that's what uh, I would yeah. do <laughs> and I loved seeing Nikki Deloach's um, baby bump yeah I thought they baby would baby talk bump. about it but they didn't I think at that point it was still early oh, okay, this was I think it. they probably filmed it a, a while back okay uh -huh. I can see that um, well I have a little news since we still don't know when Awkward's going to be airing their premiere for the second half of the season. Fall sometime. Yeah. Um, Tuesday, June 18th at 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific time, MTV's going to air a half-hour special of Awkward's Most Awkward Moments. Ooh. Ooh. So Ooh. it's going to get us the funniest lines, the juiciest relationships, and take a look back at all three seasons so far, what we've learned. So set your DVRs or make sure you're home on your couch so you can watch it because it's going to be hilarious. Whoop, whoop. And so now let's talk about our predictions. And now you're after Buzz TV predictions. Christina, you always start us with predictions. Okay, but here's the thing this time. I can't decide if these predictions are in my head or if I saw them on TV. You know what I mean? Like, I I predict that... They showed Jenna, us a lot. They did, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm like, I'm like it's shoot. Really... Am I, like, not making this... Am I making this up? Or well, did just this pretend happen? like you haven't seen the thing. <laughs> okay, so this it's okay is what I think. Yeah. I think that Jenna is going to start doing drugs and get arrested. No, she that almost, yeah, that she almost <laughs> gets arrested. She that almost, almost gets arrested. Gets arrested. <laughs> Um, okay, you guys, I thought you just told me to go and do, say whatever I want and make it like it was in my head. Um, that obviously didn't I just go as didn't play. want you to have the best predictions for once. <laughs> Wait, so what happened then? Because I'm obviously confused. She almost she gets arrested. Almost for gets arrested. Smoking weed. Oh, see, I did see that. And <laughs> I, I, I yeah. was afraid this would And happen. Maddie doesn't know, and he hears from tomorrow. But it could have been creative editing where that ha was a different situation. Okay. Episode 17, supposedly we're going to go nuts. That's what Nikki said. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to predict that I'm going to like Jenna's bad girl phase, and I don't approve of infidelity, especially in a high school relationship. <laughs> so Jenna, maybe be a little smarter about where you're making out with Colin at, because she was shown 
in like the hallways doing it a lot and she gets caught so jenna i'm gonna predict that she ends up actually pregnant and doesn't know who the baby daddy is Ooh. <sighs> That's, That's a Maury. Maury Povich, yours, father. Um, well, I hope that there's going to be a new girl in school since there's a new guy now, mm -hmm. and that MTV will cast me, and then Maddie and I will fall in love <laughs> on screen, and then it'll like turn into this chemistry that we can't differentiate between real life and what's on camera well, and then we'll like fall in love in real life. Interesting you say that because my prediction is that MTV cast a male love interest <laughs> <laughs> and it's played by me <laughs> and the same thing happens. And Jimmy, what's your prediction? Um, I predict that Maddie and Jenna will not be together after much longer and uh, I don't know, I feel like Colin, Colin and Jenna might end up together. You should be and, on the show. And creating babies. I would love to be yeah. on the show. Yeah, wait, who would you... Hashtag oh. cast Jimmy for awkward. Yeah, <laughs> hashtag Jimmy dates Ming. Jimmy yeah. dates Ming. There we go. There we go. A white guy. Yeah. <laughs> I just want you guys to know that I killed Ricky Schwartz. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us for this first half of the season for Awkward. We will be back as soon as we know when it's coming back on again. <laughs> Until then, keep talking to us on our Twitters and our Facebook pages and... After Buzz TV, you can find me at TweetT22. And you can find me at Giselle Ugardi. You can find me at Miss Zias. You can find me at Jason Eichler. And Jimmy, one more time. And you can find me at JimmyD14. Hey, uh. Until next time, guys, thank you for watching. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. <laughs> Our Max, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.